Why is it the best time for software developers to work in fintech? Today we're gonna talk about why fintech is so important and why it is so interesting and exciting for software developers to work in fintech companies compared to other industries. And we'll learn a couple of tips how to become a fintech developer. Hey guys, this is a fintech engineering a channel about building amazing fintech products and companies. And I am Vasil Soloshuk and we'll be exploring together how to become a real fintech leader and expert. Let's go! So why fintech is so important? And let me ask you a question. What are the most used things in the world? And the answer will be ear food, water, clothes, and also money, software, and there are lots of other stuff. But software is eating the world. It's actually everywhere. So no person, no organization can live their life without using a kind of software. And you also use money on the daily basis. Because Finance and money is a blood of economical system. Every company runs their operations using finance. And the, all the governments are all about taxes. So, you can't survive without using software and money. And the mix of financial world and technology world is actually a fintech, financial technology. Every person on the earth uses a kind of fintech application in their personal life, during the work, every day, and during the day. And uh, fintech, which is an innovative way of doing financial services, is delivering tremendous benefits for social and economical life. It uh, allows to connect unbanked population to the digital economy. It empowers the growth of uh, small businesses. It also allows uh, consumers to act in new and exciting way. So that's why fintech is so important. And when you work as a software developer in a fintech company, you are literally creating the engines that will move people's life tomorrow. You will be creating the future of people's life. Because fintech is the future. And what's so interesting for software developers to work in fintech? Every software developer, when choosing a company, is looking for how to apply their knowledge and how to learn some new and cool stuff. And there are tremendous opportunities in fintech to do this. And the first one will be mobile apps. Almost all fintech companies are building their mobile applications to enhance the user experience by providing the remote access to users' accounts, to users' financial data. And that's why users, they don't need to go to the physical branch of the bank, to the accountant, to their financial advisor, if they use a mobile application. And the huge portion of uh, fintech innovation is about building mobile apps for the already existing financial services. So that's why mobile apps developers will find lots of fun doing this. And the next one will be UI UX innovation. Financial services in many ways are so boring, so outdated, so old school. That's why fintech companies are focused on enhancing user experience by building a really cool and fun user interfaces. And this is the most visible part of fintech innovation. 
but you will need to follow a couple of rules. Like, do less text, make it really understandable for users, not only for financial advisors or financial analysts. Build really simple workflows, taking into account the amount of data that is used in financial services. Be careful about colors. And also make financial data visual, visualize financial data and make it adaptable to any screen size. So you will be building really cool user interfaces in fintech that you will be proud of. The next one will be about building complex software architecture. There are a couple of things that are different for fintech applications. Scalability. The user base will be constantly growing. Security. You can't expose user data and financial data to the public. Availability. Your financial services and APIs need to be uptime 99% and 9% of the time. And compliance. You will need to follow and comply with many, many regulations. And also the fintech space is very fragmented and you, need, you will need to integrate with many other systems. So that's why service-oriented approach is commonly used in fintech. At early stages it can be more monolithic but with many different layers, data layer, complex data layer integrated with many data APIs. Uh, complex workflows and uh, also UI layers. But then you will move more to service-oriented approach. And finally, last year's microservices are commonly used in fintech because it, uh, it's a mix of best practices of software engineering based on the service-oriented approach, agile development, API-first design, and also heavily rely on CI-CD, continuous integration, continuous delivery. So in fintech, you will be able to advance yourself as a really great software architect, doing many hardcore software architecture stuff. Big data engineering. In fintech, you will deal with silos of data, like transactional data about payments, and purchases coming from different e-commerce solutions, real market data coming from exchanges like stocks, bonds, ETFs, commodities, news feeds, portfolio positions from custodian banks related to wealth management, and also corporate finance data like income statements, balance sheets, and etc. And you will need to process this data at scale. And for that, you will need to use technologies like Cassandra, Hadoop, Spark, Kafka, and some others. So if you're a real lover of databases and data processing, so you will be able to apply your skills and passion in fintech. The next area is about APIs and data APIs. Fintech is pretty fragmented space. That's why many services are talking to each other, consuming data, sending data, and you will need to develop your own APIs to provide the access to your data. And you will need also to develop integrations with many systems and consume data from them. There are many market data providers like Bloomberg, Morningstar, Xignite, and some others. Payment systems and payment gateways are also providing APIs to proceed with payment transactions and get access to payment data. Commercial and custodian banks are also providing tons of data about user accounts for their APIs. And the main types of APIs will be REST API, JSON RPC, XML RPC or SOAP. So you will deal with APIs all over the place when you work in fintech company. But please, make your APIs really clear to understand, well-described, 
and simple to use. Financial engineering. It's an application of mathematical models, techniques, algorithms to solve financial problems. Mostly to run quantitative analysis to predict how the investment tool will perform, whether the new investment offering is viable and profitable in the long run, what are the types of risks involved given the market volatility. Using financial engineering, you will be able to test new financial models, new debt offerings, new investment tools, and etc. So, financial engineering can be used for trading, for insurance, uh, for asset management, for risk analysis. And financial engineering actually led to the explosion of derivatives trading and speculations, but it also led to the last financial crisis. So, if you're a scientist or mathematical geek or actually a quant analyst, this one is for you. Artificial intelligence, AI, machine learning, predictive analytics. These are all buzzwords that are used all over the place. But many so-called AI-based solutions is just an application of some statistical methods. However, in fintech and financial services, there are so many data silos, as we discussed. And for a good AI-based algorithm, you need to feed it with a huge amount of data to let it learn and then use this algorithm to provide some real insights for clients. And the use cases can be the following. For example, fraud detection. It can be KYC, know your client process. It can be fight against money laundering. It can be different compliance services. It can be prevention of uh, takeover of your accounts. The next one can be uh, data-driven decision-making. Also, customer services based on AI-driven chatbots. It can be uh, different back-office uh, applications like uh, automated uh, accounts reconciliation, like automated bookkeeping systems, and even detection of uh, harassment signs. It can be also algorithmic trading. So your friends will be R language and Python. But there are also many other libraries depending on the use case that you have. So if you are a data scientist or data engineer, so there are lots of work for you in fintech. Cybersecurity. With more and more fintech applications developed, there are more and more inexperienced users. They have not passed security trainings and they can do really stupid things. And there are a couple main issues to address. The one is to protect user data against loss and exposure. And by data, I mean PII, personal identification information, payment cards information, pins, passwords, different sensitive financial information. And the other issue, which is the worst case scenario, is the loss of money and financial assets. So fintechs, they need to protect users and systems against loss of money and finance and uh, protect data against hacking activities. And in many cases, cybersecurity solutions will rely on AI-based and predictive analytics solutions. And there are a couple types of uh, cybersecurity solutions. They can be data management solutions, KYC, Know Your Client, and IML, anti-money laundering solutions tax management, record management, uh, risk management, portfolio risk management, quantitative analysis. It can be different compliance and regulation management solutions. It can be regulations management solution. And there are many other cybersecurity areas to, to cover. 
So fintech and financial services is a real battlefield for cybersecurity gurus to fight against their hacking rivals. Blockchain and crypto. Blockchain and cryptocurrencies are sometimes seen as the main field for fintech. As you may see, it's not so. However, the evolution of DLT, which is distributed ledger technologies, and the boom of cryptocurrencies attracted many experts and funds in cryptography. While working as the blockchain developer, you will be able to contribute to many interesting solutions. Cryptocurrency exchanges, trading platforms, clearance and settlement of transactions, cross-border payments, different tracking systems for anti-money laundering, for uh, music and other royalties, for real estate processing. It can be platforms for uh, verification and security of uh, personal digital identity. So there are many interesting and evolving applications for blockchain. As you see, there are lots of interesting stuff to do for software developer in fintech. And if you are not in fintech yet, there are a couple of hints how to start. First of all, learn more about finance. For that, I recommend to go to Han Academy and uh, proceed with online courses about economics and more specifically on capital markets. Then save to bookmarks Investopedia West website. This is like an encyclopedia with all the financial terms that you will deal with while working in fintech. And also subscribe to major financial outlets like uh, Financial Times and Bloomberg to stay updated about financial news. So the next step, learn more about niches in fintech and use cases and types of companies in fintech. There is another video on this channel about uh, different types of companies in fintech, but briefly they are related to payments, banking, insurance, wealth management, lending and alternative finance, crowdfunding, non-profits, cybersecurity, and blockchain and cryptocurrencies. The next step, improve your technical skills in some area which we have discussed in this video. It can be front-end and UI, UX, or complex architecture design, or blockchain, or uh, financial mathematics, or big data, or artificial intelligence, or mobile development. And finally, apply for a job in a fintech company which is in the niche that you like the most, and that have uh, technical requirements with the skill set that you are the best. And now, please write down in comments below what do you think, if fintech is good or bad for software developers. And if you work in fintech company, please share your experience in comments as well. In the description to this video, you will find links to our communities. Fintech CTO Club, which is for technology leaders, and you will find lots of interesting content, how to improve yourself, your team, your product, your company. And another one is Wealthtech Club, which is for Wealthtech experts and builders in the wealth management space. So please like this video if you think that FinTech is really for software developers and push the subscribe button to stay tuned with FinTech Engineering channel. So thank you for watching this video. It was me, Vasil Soloshuk, and see you in the next episode of FinTech Engineering.